Hello and welcome to another edition of the Door 14 Hockey Podcast. I'm your host Marty alongside John. Hey! Hey! Um, you, were, you were missing an action in the last podcast, but you're, you're here for this week's podcast and then everyone else disappeared, so... Yeah! Uh, don't, take so it, don't, take, don't take it personally. I'd, I'll try not to. Uh, it's, it's hard, but uh, yeah, we'll... I suppose we'll just muddle through, won't we, the two of us? We'll try our best. Uh, in our last recording, you were actually on your way over this side of the water. Um, you're over you're heading over towards Belfast. Um, and we, we, we've seen your face in the, officially the last two weeks in the SSE for two games. So, yeah. I know. Well, I, yeah, was, was... I was there for the first time in, like, well, three months since I moved, something like that. Uh, but the first games I've been able to take in at the SSE since moving. Which was great. It was like a, a nice little homecoming, um, and great to see some CHL as well. Uh, very very good game against uh, Skelleftio. Um, fantastic two periods of hockey from the Giants, and then it just kind of got away from us in the third yeah. period, which was a real shame. Uh, I think it did it in three two. Yep, three two three four two. two. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, I can't remember between that game and well, last four, night's game. Yeah, it was four, on free sports. I think it ended four two. It was an empty net goal. I think was the was the end of the four. I think it was two. I yeah, I think it was. It was an empty net goal that kind of uh, put the nail in the coffin for it. Um, so I think that's right. It was four mm-hmm. two, and then last night I think it was four one. Mm-hmm. Um, in uh, whatever countries skill FT are from Sweden, Sweden, Switzerland, Sweden, Sweden. Sweden. Yeah, Spin. Um, um, yeah I, but yeah, it was great. And then, of course, there was the the Guildford Flames game as well. Um, I'm very much aware that uh, some people in Belfast are now calling me the Scud. Uh, so just to be fully prepared, everyone, I am coming back this weekend. So do be prepared for uh, a defeat against the Coventry Blaze, um, um, and don't blame me if it happens. Um, yeah, we will talk about a bit more of the rundown of the league and about um, obviously that defeat to the Guildford Flames this past weekend. We will talk about that in a few minutes. Can but, I? Yes. Can I also? I, I, I'm very much aware that I missed last week's podcast, but I, I did listen in, and uh, I do want to answer a question that was posed to us um, because um, you guys did kind of have a, a think about like who would I pick as my favourite giant and why. But I think um, I know this. So I think I know this already. So Mark Mark asked us, and uh, realistically, I mean, it's one of the questions uh, that really I wish I was there to answer. So I'm going to answer it today. Um, now, mine is a. I'm I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to give you just one. Uh, I am going to give you two. Um, the first one is Matt Nickerson, because the man was before he was in Belfast when he was in Fife. I loved everything that he did as a, a big guy on the ice but and you love to hate him when he wasn't in Belfast when he was in Fife when you had Fife in the barn you love to hate him because he was going out with a particular role in mind and basically he was looking to take Adam Keefe's head off then when he was with us and he was skating with Adam Keefe I absolutely love that element of the game I love what he brought now obviously the game is transitioning away from that but I absolutely loved it but his game changed as well let alone the fact that he was an absolute gent off the ice as well. I have probably more selfies with Matt than I have with almost any other player. My second one, and I can't not say him because you produced a lovely little video for me before I got married. And not only did uh, Tyler Beskarwani be a part of that, his entire family was part (laughs) of that. Um, Basically... There's a, a backstory that goes with it, but essentially, in a, a little sort of pre-wedding video, the entire Beskarwani family told me to shut up, uh, which was an incredible sort of 45 seconds of that video was being told to shut up by someone else's family. Um, but yeah, again, for that off the ice, Tyler was a standout goaltender, and I, I know that you guys went with uh, a former um, netminder of the Belfast Giants as well, and that there, there is something about netminders. There's something about the the way that they are, the way that they're wired. Um, they've got to be crazy to stand between the pipes to start with, but they are just salt of the earth people um, and tend to be the biggest drinkers as well when you get them <laughs> uh, off the ice as well. Uh, we shared more than a few drinks with uh, with Tyler and his time in Belfast. So yeah, there you go. Hence, I'm not picking one. I'm picking two. I'm cheating. I, I don't care. I think it was one of those sad drunken nights where we were drinking with Tyler that the Shut Up John thing came about. Uh, I think it was. Well, that uh, was when we were drinking with not just Tyler, but also with his dad. That's true. 
Um, I think that's how it all came about. Um, so, it was. Yeah, there you go. Uh, n- as I mentioned already, no, uh, no John. Or sorry, no, Ar- no Aaron um, and no Dave tonight. Um, Aaron is actually off in Boston uh, for work. Um, if you're listening, jo- uh, if you're listening, uh, Aaron, hi, fr- hi, hi in Boston. Hope you're hi, hi, you're Aaron. hi, Aaron. Um, and uh, uh, Dave is attending to some family uh, and a family emergency, which happened today. So uh, we hope everything yeah, goes. Hope everything's okay there, and everyone's yeah. Everyone's we're thinking fine. about you, Dave. Um, but he will hopefully return for our next podcast. Um, we have um, we we'll see you again this weekend, John. You'll be coming back to Belfast as of tomorrow, and you'll be back for the game possibly at the weekend. I think you said you might be at, you might grace our presence in the SSE on Saturday. Yes, I am going to be at the SSE on Saturday night, and fingers crossed, a special little someone yeah. uh, is going to be at her first uh, home Belfast Giants game. Uh, yeah, she'll be I- in attendance, and I know there's a few people that are very excited to meet her as well. I was just about to say, that was the other thing I was going to say before we moved on. I was going to say, the one thing that was very noticeable and very noted uh, from the fact that you were back was just clearly how much people talk to you more than they talk to me or, me or Dave when the scenes are in the arena. Um, it's funny, people, I did, I did listen. stopped and chatted to you and I was like, well, well, we're here all the time, why don't you say hello? I, I, like I say, I did listen to um, the last podcast and Dave was the, I think it was Dave was the one who said it, that um, you feel like you've lost the, the outgoing uh, people <laughs> person clearly. in person on the podcast. Um, but yes, I'll be back. I'll be carrying a very, well, I think a very, very cute baby. So if anyone wants to come and chat, please 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 do yeah yeah don't get confused because i might have the child um so i'm not john just you know yeah because the likelihood is i will have stolen your child or just been walking come on out with come you. on Marty. Pe- people people know who i am yeah it's true it's true don't they know who you are yeah yeah um john let's move on let's have, take a quick look um at the at the, at the fixtures the standings across the league um and also the challenge cup um as of this week um we are sitting on currently on the 12th of october i think we're about eight games maximum played in the in the league um so far and majority of the games in the first round of the challenge cup have now been completed so let's take a quick look and see where things stand uh in first place in the league currently in the lead ice hockey league is the guildford flames with Eight games played. Sorry, I've covered my notes here. Eight games played and 13 points. Coventry in second with seven games played and 12 points. Sheffield are in third with seven games played and 11 points. Cardiff are in fourth with five games played and 10 points. Manchester sit fifth with eight games played, seven points. Nottingham are in sixth with six games played and four points. The Belfast Giants sit in seventh with two games played and two points. Flyers are sitting in eighth with five games played and two points. Dundee sit in ninth with five games played, one point, and Glasgow are in tenth with five games played and also one point. Um, we coming into this last week, coming into the last week in the pa- this past weekend, shall we say? Um, we the Belfast Giants were up at the Gil- up against the Guildford Flames. Um, a couple of things to mention: Guildford Flames obviously sitting there uh, top of the league, but also they're sitting top of their Challenge Cup group, which we'll get into in a second in the group stages. But I mean, John, coming into this into the weekend's game there against Guildford on this past Sunday, I mean, it wasn't unexpected that the Giants were going to come up against a hard-fought battle against this team. I think a lot of people going into this game maybe kind of thought of Guildford of old, and it kind of almost sounds exactly like we said about the Coventry Blaze last week. Uh, people a bit like the Nottingham Panthers situation, where the Nottingham Panthers obviously jumped to this conclusion that we should be beating the Coventry Blaze, therefore let's put out a statement when we lost against them. Un, you know, but the fact that Guildford are, are also another team that actually have found form at the start of the season and are actually showing quite a good performance so far. What are your thoughts? Yeah, they are massively. Um, I think that. Correct me if I'm wrong. That was our league opener, or, or at least our home, our home league opener. Uh, I think we've had. Did we have one one league game against a Scottish team already? Um, it's definitely the first game we've played against what I would class as a top half um, team and to say top half that's not taking anything away from anyone else but Guildford and Coventry are lights out compared to everyone else so what's really interesting is uh, and to kind of break the fourth wall a little bit we are recording a day early so right now um, those two teams Guildford and Coventry are currently playing it's in the first period and it's still nil nil that's an interesting game to watch uh, that's top two in the league Yes, they've only played eight and seven games respectively uh, between them, but they have been the form teams. There is absolutely no getting away from it. Um, Guildford skated incredibly hard. Um, at no point were we comfortable in that game. 
uh, by we I mean the Royal We and the Belfast Giants. I was not on the ice and part of the action. Um, but the these two weeks are going to be really telling about what to expect from Guildford. We know now what to expect from Guildford, which is a hard game and a close game. Um, Coventry, we're going to find out exactly uh, this weekend coming what to expect from them. Um, interestingly, though, when you look down the table, those two teams are the two that highlight themselves. But when you look down the table, Cardiff still look very strong. They are the only team who have a 100% record in the league so far. Played 5 1 5 10 points. Um, so they they are definitely going to be a team to watch. Uh, it just so happens that they've played a few less games. Um, Guildford and Coventry have both lost one uh, of their games. So they're sitting at, uh, I think, about 80%. Uh, roughly, that puts them up for, for wins. Um, so, yeah, it, it's still early doors. Like, eight, seven, eight games uh, per team. Belfast Giants only sitting on two games played. Uh, one win, one loss. Um, very early doors, uh, but look, the, the the league repeat is on anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, Belfast right. Giants are going to walk it. Indeed. Um, yeah, as you say, early, very early days. Um, you know, so, but it's interesting as you mentioned. You know, you mentioned there the Cardiff Devils sitting with five games played, taking the maximum point ten points out of those five games. Um, but when you look at their form, let's take a quick look just at the Challenge Cup. I know it's your favorite tournament, so let's get a quick look at it. Um, the Challenge Cup pretty much is nearly coming to a close now. The first stages anyway, and if we look, we obviously we at this stage we know the Group A, which is the Belfast Giants, Five Flyers, Dundee Stars, and Glasgow Can. We know how that's finished. Belfast Giants took top seed with uh, six games played, 12 points, maximum points from there. Five Flyers um, with six games played, seven points. And Dundee, six games played, seven points. Glasgow played six games, no points whatsoever. And in Group B, obviously it was the Guildford Flames, Coventry Blaze and the Cardiff Devils. Guildford are sitting at the top of their group stage with four games played and six points. And Coventry are four games played and five points. Cardiff have actually been kicked out of the challenge cup already so they won't trans they won't move through to the next round haven't played their maximum number of six games and, and only taken four points from the six games so it's interesting when they have such sort of had such good run of form so far with the league and but they had a really bad poor start with the with it with the challenge cup i think a lot of people were kind of like this isn't good Car- the challenge cup and they're already pretty much out i mean there's anything have, telling have they that? have they have they officially been kicked out because i don't think they have based on Nottingham in Group C, I think Nottingham, if they have an absolute mare, because they're sitting, so Cardiff are sitting six games played, so they've played their uh, all their group stage games um, with only four points. Nottingham are still sitting with three games oh, played and two points. Wow. So they, I think there's only one team drops from those two groups, I think, Car- um, to, make it, to make it an even number. The Panthers still have three games to play in that group, and if they won yep. their three games, they would obviously go through, but... Yeah, don't Cardiff, get me wrong. If they, yeah, if they win Cardiff them, could. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, uh, I forgot that. I forgot that that's how it worked. Only one team gets kicked out from the the two last two groups. I forgot that's how it worked. Um, yeah, yeah. Because um, obviously three three qualifying from Group A, uh, which means there has to be an odd number coming from the other ones. Which means out of groups B and C, only one team gets dropped. It, it's a mess. It's it the Challenge Cup. It makes Look, no sense. it's the Challenge Cup group stage. Who cares? It's because, a nonsense. It's a complete yeah. tin pot trophy yeah. unless the Belfast Giants win it. I knew I would get you to say that today. I knew I was going to get you there. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting It's an interesting to see how things are progressing. But some, the big thing to take away from it is the fact that Guildford and Coventry are continuing that form across both um, both, cha- you know, both the Challenge Cup and the league, which is uh, interesting to see. Um, which is Well, uh, interestingly, interestingly, that game that's currently underway is a Challenge Cup game. Uh, yeah. between Coventry and Guildford. I believe this is for top seed in their group. group. And the Coventry Blaze have just gone 1-0 up, so we will keep abreast. And, you know, it's going to be 48 hours or so after this game, but we're going to bring you up to the minute updates <laughs> with the scores as we go on, or at least as we sort of notice as we go through. Because, to be honest, I'm probably going to stop looking at this webpage at some point, and the game will probably end. More than likely. Um, John, I think that's it for our catch up for our, just a rundown of the league standings and stuff. So if it's okay with you, we'll get stuck into our period one of hockey.
Okay, period one of hockey is just a roundup of news stories from around the UK. Um, we, I just want to start off tonight's uh, period one of hockey just um, to uh, highlight um, the passing of another Belfast Giants um, long-term familiar face, I suppose, or for, I should say more familiar voice from the Belfast Giants. Um, today, the sad news came that uh, Wayne Hardman, um, who is a long-term, a long-time uh, color commentator across the Belfast Gi- uh, from Belfast Giants webcasts back in the day um, has sadly passed away um, in the early hours of this morning. Um, obviously, here at uh, Door 14 Hockey, we just want to pass on our condolences to Hardman's family. Um, and we obviously, our thoughts are with them at this time. Hardman, I don't know if, if, if you aren't familiar with Hardman, um, he had a very, if, if you didn't watch the, the, the Giants podcast or the Giants webcasts, probably early, I suppose early mid 2000 mid 2000 like kind of i'm trying to think when it would be i would know him i, I remember his voice from when we first started co- um, coming to the giants and first start watching the webcasts so we're talking 2006 2007 2008 kind of time and his voice was so distinctive um he was very animated very colorful and uh, hence the reason he's a color commentator um and the be all the time where he would maybe i think he was always fondly known for having a bit of difficulty just like myself mispronouncing some uh some names um but at least trying his best to do it um and there'd be moments where he would try to pronounce a surname of maybe a player that he didn't know too well and then someone would be like um correcting him the side and then he would make a little comment about like you know oh that's what i said you know there'd be uh, <laughs> he just had a really funny sense of humor about him um and he had a very distinct voice um so everybody here at door 14 hockey wishes his whole family um you know just send our thoughts and condolences across the pond to 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 them um, <clears throat> um, moving on, um, obviously the big news from this week is a continuation, I suppose, of a story, John, that uh, broke last week uh, or two weeks ago as we were recording. Um, at the time of recording two weeks ago on our podcast, there was a a Twitter announcement was made by the Glasgow clan in, a, um, in which they had signed a, a controversial player shall we say, who um, we won't mention again by name and we won't continue, we won't talk about it too much in terms of what happened at that point. Everyone knows the story. Uh, they hired a player who had a, a checkered past, who had admitted to um, uh, charges of misconduct and charges of sexual offences, um, ran from the country. Um, Everyone knows the story and where it is at the moment. But the, the, the big thing that, happened, that came with it was that the Glasgow Cam put out a video in which they kind of tried to downplay in some ways what had actually happened and then quickly took that video down off their social media t- channels. Uh, as you can imagine, and as should have happened, uh, the Glasgow Clan fan base and I suppose the Elite League fan base right across the whole of the Elite League, um, I suppose, challenged the, the club and the team about what they had done uh, which led to a statement coming out later in that evening um, in which they said that the player is no longer signed. And then we waited a full near 24 hours, or well, not even 24 hours, we waited until the next morning, 12 hours later at least in the next morning, um, to, for a, an official statement to come from Neil Black, who was the, who's the clan chairman, in which he stated that they would be uh, taking a lot of consideration to... Um, he be he has to take some time to think about what it is and at the time both the head coach and the gm of the glasgow clan were both put on suspension until further investigation could take place uh that f- as we know i know that f- that investigation did take place um in which then neil black put out a further statement on the 7th of october which stated um i want to take this opportunity to reach out to you all um oh wait did i read the wrong one first there's two Yep, sorry. The first one came out. Sorry, let me let me read the first one first, which is October the fourth. Um, it was that whole thing with John. We were talking about Chrome switching the the tabs around. Um, I have now concluded my internal investigation into the events which led to the suspension of both Malcolm Cameron and Gareth Chalmers on Thursday, the twentieth of September. As a result of my findings, the Glasgow clan are, with immediate effect, making the following changes to the management and reporting structure of the on ice activities of the clan. Malcolm Cameron will return to his role as head coach, reporting to a newly appointed clan GM, whose role and appointment replaces is that of the current clan chief executive we hope to be able to confirm the clan gm appointment in the coming weeks in the meantime the head coach will now report directly to the clan chairman until the clan gm appointment is confirmed the club sincerely apologizes to anyone upset by recent events so that was the first statement in which we got a an indication of what was the the overall outcome 
as you can imagine, um, and if I'm wrong, John, you can correct me here. As you can imagine, people were still not happy, which I think were well within their rights not to be happy, that not enough was being done, um, and not enough, I suppose, what's the word I'm looking for? There wasn't enough... Um, Genuine, contrition, ge- contrition genu- genuine, genuine contrition around having any ser- kind of remorse about what had happened and how the situation came to be. Um, and a lot of people were saying not enough was being done, that GM being removed is not enough. Uh, the fans were quite vocal about it, but not only were the fans vocal about it, but also a number of the main, about six or seven of the main sponsors for the team, including the title sponsors, the Asprey, who are the title sponsors for the Glasgow clan, also had have taken have withdrawn their sponsorship for the club. Um, as this happened and this took place and, and it kind of started to happen, we also seen a number of, um, t- also a number of other members of the Glasgow clan uh, team, including media managers, including social media managers, including um, backstage staff, also um, handing in their, their um, notices um, to come away from the team. Um, to then the response being Neil Black putting out a second or th- this day, this day, sorry, that would be a third statement on October the 7th, which uh, kind of went in this kind of way. Um, I've been the proud owner of the Glasgow clan for 12 years. And in that time, we have experienced many highs and lows. Without a question, as owner, I'm not sure. I'm sure for you as fans, the last week has been the lowest of these lows. Let me start by properly by saying this and unequivocally, I am as shocked and appalled at the nature of the recent events as you all are. I was only made aware of the situation late last Thursday evening. We're profoundly sorry about everything that had happened and I completely appreciate why there is so much anger out there. It's, a compl- it's an incredibly complex situation to navigate for many reasons, some of which you, the fans, will not be aware of, but there are some factors I've also been legally advised to strongly consider that you are likely not to be aware of and that I have been advised not to speak about publicly. I've spoken to various authorities both here in the UK and in the US, and I conclude the investigation into what transpired last week and the nature of those events. The decisions I made on the back of those investigation is what I could actually do without a risk of legal ramifications elsewhere. Due to the potential of legal issues, my hands are tied, which prevents me from saying anything further however i just want to put this in the next part of his statement stated something like this and this is where i'm gonna just bleep it here this is where shit hits the fan shall we say i'm extremely disappointed that any supporter of the club or sponsor is wavering in their support we need every single fan and sponsor while the team is having a tough time on the ice, everything negative happening off it only exasperates those difficulties. We, of course, look forward to supporting charities and causes at the appropriate time and continuing the superb work of the club over the last 12 years. Um, and then also then went on to... <laughs> so that was one thing that it mentioned was, you know, almost like putting a bit of a blame on the fans and the, the sponsorships for deciding, well, don't think you went far enough and we're not happy. And they spoke with their feet. And that clearly didn't go down very well the next part then came as a bit of a i don't know if it was a bit of a surprise but i think it may have been a bit of a surprise in the light of everything ultimately as chairman of the club the buck stops with me the chairman has to take some responsibility for the people within the organization now is the time to explore the opportunity to put the glasgow clan up for sale or to seek a broader ownership group i believe a new or broader ownership group could reinvigorate this fantastic franchise and fan base it is what our fans deserve so officially the glasgow clan are up for sale John. Yep. Your thoughts? Right up until this statement, which took what three, four, five days to come out. Finally, the uh, mm-hmm. club was in complete lockdown mode for a few days. Um, rightly so, uh, as well. Uh, let alone the you've got the the turmoil of an owner, uh, effectively a silent owner in Neil Black as well, having to step in and. Uh, suspend now they haven't said he's been fired but suspend a gm um and yet not suspend or take any action against a coach who is clearly involved who had a business role has sorry a business role uh, and a recruitment role within the team um now that's uh, another conversation to come up um clearly after the game in fife uh, there is a broad expectation that the coach has lost the room uh the team did not score until the third period 
I think, and I think they ended up with a was it a seven two loss against Fife in Fife. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a coach who has lost the confidence of the room. Um, that team fought harder for their caretaker coach uh, in the middle of everything. Whenever their team and their organization still hadn't made a statement regarding what was going on. Uh, if I'm perfectly honest, I would back a lot of the sentiment online. Uh, and say that Malcolm Cameron has to go. Uh, I believe his position is untenable. Um, if he was in any way involved in the organising or the due diligence of that signing, then he has lost any legitimacy to stay with that franchise. Uh, and rather than wait to be pushed, he should walk. Uh, mm-hmm. Not just for... The club, not just for the business, not just for the fans, but for his own career. He has an opportunity to salvage something personally from this. Um, as small as it can be, walking away from that club is the right thing for him to do. But it seems that he will not be. And it's very difficult to not read between the lines with Neil Black's statement, where he talks about legal issues and not being able to discuss. It almost looks like uh, there, is, there are reasons, business reasons or legal reasons for which Malcolm Cameron cannot be removed. Um, so to me, that's that's one part of it. Um, now, since then, and sorry, before I go any further with this, the one thing I want to hoist up on this is the reaction from clan fans start off. The reaction from clan fans has been nothing short of brilliant. They have got the right attitude with this. They understand that the issue was bigger than their club at that point. Now, obviously, they want their club to survive beyond this at this point, but they absolutely had the right attitude with this, that the message that that signing was going to send absolutely should not stand. Uh, And I want to, in particular, point out um, Glasgow Clan Live, uh, or Clan Live TV, sorry, uh, or sorry, Glasgow Clan Live Cali from... uh, Glasgow Clan Live, who organised a fundraiser um, for Rape Crisis Scotland, um, which raised a a good amount of money, uh, and that's all gone to um, the right place uh, in reaction to this. So, massive congratulations to him. Did I say, did I go over over like two and a half grand or something? I think so, yeah. I think the last time... And let's let's, let's remember, Cali, it has not just been... uh, a bastion for this situation the clan wouldn't exist without the work that Cali put in whenever the arena deal and everything fell through with the um, receivership uh, of the shopping centre and everything that came with that Cali organised petitions he delivered those um, down to the the business that was managing the receivership um, and he helped that organisation to become what it is now, to become part owner, part operator of their rink, uh, or their arena, sorry. Um, so Cali does a lot of good work, and it, some of it goes uh, sort of un, under the radar, but this one, uh, with the fundraiser that he put out there and the, the action that has been sort of pushed forward through his channels, uh, he absolutely deserves to be applauded, so massive congrats there. Um, And I see from today, he is also um, backing an official bid uh, by uh, a business which has been set up called Glasgow Clan Limited, um, which has been put out on social media today. Um, And they are, it seems to be, launching an official bid to take over the Glasgow Clan by two individuals called John Strange and Phil Riley. Um, So we can only hope that this whole event is coming to a close. Uh, obviously, business deals take time to go through, um, but either long term or short term, hopefully this is coming to an end. Don't get me wrong on this. The club still has answers uh, or questions to answer. Uh, they still have an element of transparency to give on this, not least with the coach uh, and the coaching situation. Um, this isn't by any means over, but things are finally going in the right direction for that club. Yeah, and as you say, the one thing we will say about it is obviously the fans and their reaction was just exactly as you would expect. Um, and at, at times like this, you do kind of you you do feel for the fans as well in terms of like you know you kind of get stuck in a rock and hard between a rock and hard because you know how much you love your home team. You 
uh, your heart and soul is in your home team. And when something like this kind of happens, I know what happened in Belfast was a different situation back in 2012-ish. It was a different yeah. situation. But at the time, the fans... You, you can remember yourself, John, like back in the, the back in back when the incident happened here in, in the Belfast Giants situation. Um, the fans rallied around it and were very vocal about their thoughts around it. Um, and you, you kind of do have that 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 real, just this real thing about you know the club that you love and the club that you're proud of and the thing that you were that 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 symbol that you were in your chest well, nearly let's, every let's, weekend. Let's it almost gets when... it, it's almost getting torn apart by by the yep. media for 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 reasons that. For the right reasons. For the right reasons. But also there's part of you then just kind of feels like, oh, this is my club and I can't believe it's got to this stage. But let's let's remember with what happened in Belfast, yes, it was a very different situation, but the um obviously the players, the staff and everything, they absolutely understood the the issues that were going on there. Um the organization that came out of it fully understood the the issues for fans. That video that came out from that when the new organization was built i still hold it up as one of the most emotive pieces of sports video sports media that i have ever seen oh yeah because the organization fully understood the mess that they had made to start with and the the hurt that that had caused to fans um but they also understood what it meant that a team was still in Belfast. And they they were able to make that point through something as as simple but as emotive as that video. Yep. And my hope through all of this is that whatever shape the Glasgow clan end up in as a, a business, as a team, as an organisation, that they can repay their fans in the same way. Yep, agreed. And that's it. We just hope we'll, as obviously, um, this this story will continue going for the next number of weeks, um, and I'm sure there'll be another update um, come our next recording. So we will update you um, as of our next recording in terms of any other progress, progress or changes that are taking place in Glasgow. John, we're going to move on to our last story for this period. Um, oh, whoa! I'm whoa. going to bring you an update. End of the first period. Coventry <laughs> Guildford Flames. It's one nil after the first. Okay, there you go. How Sorry, 1-0 yeah. to the commentary, Blaze. There's a reason I'm not a commentator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, as I was saying, we have one more story in this period to cover um, before we move on to our period two. And this is a story that whenever it broke, I messaged you guys in the group and I said, okay, it's official. Hell has officially frozen over. Uh, yeah. Because the Elite League um, management team or the board of the Elite League were open and transparent and admitted fault about something and I was just like Well Whoa. the board the board may or may not have we we still don't know if Todd Kelman just has the the login details for the website and he just went ahead and did this. Uh so as of um the third of October, um it came for this part. I don't think everybody was expecting this story to come out on uh last Monday morning. Um but it did. Uh the story came out um including a video um of Todd Kelman in that very plush looking um office again um this is the second time i've seen him in the video with that like plush looking office in the background um in which they uh, announced the publishment uh, the, uh, not, uh announced i suppose the official launch of the premier sports playoff finals weekend um i suppose the dates but more importantly that the tickets would be going on sale as of the 31st of october um early bird prices would be starting um and they'll be running until the 31st of december now what early is bird is back baby what is most important about it is is that not the fact that the, the tickets are going on sale in october this year which is really early compared to any other year usually we don't see the tickets going on sale until around about maybe january it's usually the middle of january do you know what i know when it is it's usually in the middle of january and everybody's just waiting for their pay to come in and you're just like why why are you putting it in january i don't understand anyway um but they have announced that they are going the tickets are officially going on sale on the 31st of october but what the biggest announcement came was with the video was todd kelman in the video stated from the from the get-go at the very early point said uh we at the elite league hold up our hands and say that last year we got it wrong the fans as we kind of said it was going to happen the fans voted with their feet didn't show up for the showcase of the elite league the playoff final weekend um on mass nobody people didn't show up tickets were still being sold those tickets weren't so it was massive we know we know what happened we know the arena was not even a sellout we know 
how bad it got. The to. arena was nowhere near a sellout. No, and we know because that because someone, someone in this room, uh, was constantly berating the elite league on social media with uh, little little maps that were showing all the empty seats in the yep. arena before uh, playoff weekend. Can't think who that was. So as a result, the elite league have reversed their decision and have brought back uh, early bird prices. So the weekend, so starting from the thirty first of October up until the thirty first of December. Um, and not have not only that, but they have also reinstated a tiered structure to that in terms of pricing. In terms of they have an adult price, they have a concessions price, and they now have brought back a family, two adults, two concessions price as well for a group ticket. The prices have been reduced again from last year. They've come right down. So the early bird prices now mean that adult ticket is ninety nine pounds for the full weekend. The concession tickets are down to seventy nine pounds for the weekend. And the adult family, or the two adults, two concessions, family ticket is three hundred and thirty-eight pounds for the full weekend ticket. Now people will say that um, it's still maybe slightly expensive. That is fine. That's completely fine. We know that this current climate, this current economic climate that we're currently in, money's a bit tighter. People are struggling to pay a bit more, and therefore maybe they find it is. However, this is definitely a step in the right direction for the elite league to turn out and say, you know what? Yep, we overpriced it last year. We went too far, and we're going to try and we're trying to fix that in some way. In that, here is a better offer and a better option in terms of what we're going to offer. Yeah, look, it's there's no doubt that this is a purely business decision from the elite league. However, I will, and it's the once in a blue moon thing, I will give them credit for this, that even if this is a business decision, they have at least come out and said sorry. Yep. That That is worth its weight in gold from the Elite League. Never, I don't think, have we heard any sort of contrition from this league, from this board, in this way. This is such a major step forward for league fan relations um it, it just it never happens it's never happened this is a league where we have almost no transparency about decisions that are taken at board level um and yeah fair play to them the fact that they've brought back the early bird is is massive they didn't have that it was basically one price for all tickets it didn't matter if you were six or 66 you paid the same price so having that concession back is also massive and having the family tickets back so the families are the bread and butter of that playoff weekend there are always a lot of kids who are in attendance at that weekend especially in the nottingham and sheffield uh, fan bases it's a it's a big family weekend if you've got kids and you can take them to that and you can afford to take them to that of course you will it's a great weekend uh, if you're the likes of of us traveling a little bit further then obviously it's all about being a drunken lout for three days um but yeah that, that drop in price that early bird price means that yeah we absolutely get the opportunity to buy another uh, three or four pints over that yep. weekend uh and you talk about us being drunken lights that weekend and there's actually a possibility we might be drunken lights that weekend we might be we may absolutely. be absolutely yeah we still haven't we have we haven't confirmed if the full lineup is going but uh we know that at least three of us at least three of us are going. Uh, anyone else that's going, we will see you in a certain chicken restaurant on Friday and we'll see you in bunkers on Saturday. That's indeed. Um, it's interesting, John, in terms of, um, just before we do move on from this story, I mean, they are publishing the the details in relation to the, the ticket sales, uh, so online bookings, as well as which teams will be selling the tickets directly themselves, which we know which teams probably will end up doing that. Sheffield, Cardiff, blah, 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 the usual. Uh, block allocations and everything else will be all published before the 31st of October, so probably be next week. That- that being that being said, the, this is the whole thing. I know that you're gonna maybe make this point or make another point, but just to point out, they've reduced the prices. That's great. This is a, a passing the savings on to fans, which is fantastic. If you're a Nottingham or a Sheffield fan, you are still about to tear your hair out because for the having to go through your team, you're probably going to pay a bit more on top of that as well. Especially in Nottingham because they just love taken from the poor and given to the organization like the anti robin hoods that they are i i'm going to argue that maybe this year we're not going to see nottingham try i don't think it's going to be a nottingham thing i think nottingham fans will be able to buy from the arena i think that's what's going to happen this year with nottingham just 
personally, I think that's what's going to happen because they're with with the fact that they have Pash now, who's kind of leading there, and it's kind of a lot of things have changed. I I just have a feeling not anymore. He be that has way. own. He has bosses. I think I think it's going to be more the usual likes of Sheffield will definitely be paying for their own and Cardiff. Oh, Sheffield, also. absolutely. Cardiff. Um, I don't know. I don't think last time you had to pay Cardiff. Oh, you did. You just went. Oh, through. no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I apologize, mm-hmm. Cardiff. You're douchebags. Yeah, Cardiff added on an extra. F- no, they added on five or ten pounds initially and then they changed it but cardiff was one of the ones you had to buy off yeah yeah yeah. you had to buy from them um, it's a wonder in say, sheffield that you don't have to pay the steelers for your train to nottingham as well so my guess is going to be that the adult ticket for those teams who are going to sell themselves will go from 99 pounds up to at least 109 or potentially 119 i'm going to say they're going to add on a 10 pound charge or 20 pound charge 20 guess. pound charge are you mm-hmm. serious yeah i think so You're, you honestly think they're going to yeah. be able to tack on 20 percent mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If watch this space, if yep. that's if that's real, if that's really early bird, if that Sheffield ticket is about a hundred and twenty quid, I honestly hope the Sheffield Steelers do an inside out jersey night or a no colors night. I just because... imagine. I just see. I don't see, or at least it'll, it'll at least be hundred and nine pound. They'll at least put on hundred. They'll at least put ten pound charge on it. I at least you, you heard it here first, uh, Marty telling you what two point Tony is going to charge for a. I think uh, a playoff ticket for his fans. I just think I, th- I think that's what it is. Anyway, we'll see. As of next week, uh, there'll be released more details from that in terms of the the block situation, the block allocation, and everything else. As I say, as I mentioned already, it's interesting that they are releasing so early in the season. But I'll be interested to see how they the learned, ticket sales work. They, They've learned their lesson. Um, yeah. I think this is going to be the standard from now on that we're going to see playoffs on sale pre-Christmas. Um, let alone, I mean, why they didn't think that this was a thing to do, that you could go out and buy a season a season ticket, a playoff ticket for someone for Christmas. Smart. That's such, that's such if, an easy if, business decision. If, if you want to buy me a Christmas present, uh, by all means, yeah. You talking to someone behind me? No, just you, you guys, the three of you. If you just want to, just like you know, thank me for all my hard work and get me a Christmas present. I, I, I tell you what, I you, wouldn't say no. You, t- you take an extra five percent your paycheck from door fourteen. You take so, that from us. Uh, let me see, five percent of what I'm currently getting. So, so, so nothing. It's just, yeah, okay. Absolutely, yeah. and you're worth every penny. Oh, thanks. With that, let's move on to our period two of hockey. Okay, period. Loser! Two. You forgot the penalty box. <laughs> oh, oh, that's reverse. Never mind. Then. We'll we'll go we'll go past it. We'll go past it. Let's just kick on with the so two people got suspensions <laughs> since the last one. Uh, one was uh, Cardiff's Cox for a spear, which was hilarious. But we're going to go past it now anyway. Uh, and the other one was uh, Derek Angeli from the Belfast Giants was fined for a high stick. Uh, not as funny, but. Uh, yeah, Marty's just to say that we're going to move on. So here we are in period two. Do you, do you, want, to, do you want to go back? Because you sound very No, it's done now. It. It's done now. Very... It's done now. Okay, okay. Period two is a roundup of news stories from uh, around the rest of the world in terms of ice hockey. Focusing not just on the NHL and the AHL, but anywhere where the stories are coming out of. Um, John, I'm going to start with you, if that's okay. Um, and that's probably, this is the biggest breaking story over the last number of weeks um, coming out of Canada. Um, so I'm going to hand to you for this story. Yeah, so over the last, uh, I don't even want to say just the last few weeks, but over uh, a long number of months, um, due to uh, a litany of issues uh, that have dogged Hockey Canada, um, whether it's been um, problems in the minor leagues, whether it's been uh, allegations against coaches, directors, um, against the the organisation itself... Uh, this week, uh, Hockey Canada's um, executive officer uh, and board of directors have all stepped down. Um, so Chief Executive Officer Scott Smith and the entire board uh, agreed to step down, uh, including the, the rest of the entire leadership team. Uh, Marty, this, is, this has been predicated on the fact that a, a variety of minor leagues have uh, taken the decision to remove themselves from Hockey Canada as an organisation. Uh, one that I, I know of uh, directly through reading about it was the Quebec uh, Minor Hockey League, 
uh, they separate. They very publicly uh, announced their separation uh, around about a week ago, um, having set up their their own leadership uh, board. They decided that they would no longer be part of this. Now, this is um, part of Hockey Canada's hopes of retaining their position as the national body for ice hockey in Canada. Um, the questions still stand over whether this is going to be enough or whether the the hockey community in Canada deems that Hockey Canada itself is the problem um, and it needs a, an entirely new direction. Uh, but yeah, this is this is big news. It's a big shake up. Um, some will say it's not before time and some will say it's a long been a long time due um, and that this organisation needs a... Uh, a clean sweep um, so we we wait to see what the the final outgoing of this will be um, it's to be clear nothing will happen immediately uh, an interim management committee will be put in place um, however uh, a new leadership group will not be elected until a virtual election which is scheduled for the 17th of December uh, but it has been announced that the uh, current board uh, and leadership team will not seek re-election uh, so it will be an entirely new leadership team and board uh, who will come forward should anyone put their name forward that is and I think that's probably the biggest question at this point is uh, who wants to take on this poison chalice you're right I mean it's a it's a massive massive um, challenge ahead for anybody who does take it on Keep it in mind, now, I kind of supposed to put this in perspective for anybody who maybe isn't um, so familiar, for anybody who's from the UK and maybe isn't as familiar with the the wider Hockey Canada and, and what it all means and why it's all came about. Hockey Canada does manage, as, as, as John had mentioned, a lot of the player associations, a lot of the player um, junior development teams development areas they they are part of the world championships olympic game committee all of that is all part of cocky canada and as john mentioned you've got teams who are pulling out you've got or sorry you've got divisions pulling out um you have massive sponsors the likes of tim hortons scotia bank uh canadian tires um buyer hockey um here are the major suppliers of all um hockey canada equipment and jerseys and everything else have all pulled out um from from their support of um hockey canada following those uh con that confirmation of the almost nine million canadian dollars that was spent on 21 set settlements um hushed settlements as well in some of these cases for sexual assault complaints against players uh since 1989 um so it's a massive amount of stuff that is going on registration fees as players registration fees have stopped being paid by parents and youth organizations right across the country as you would expect so it's a massive thing for whoever as john mentioned whoever comes in as this new board as this new the new ceo whoever it is is going to take up the mantle and, and try and get um hockey canada skating in the right direction um do you like that um hey they they they're gonna have a uphill uh, battle in order to make sure that it's it's being transparent that people have confidence and trust in hockey canada again it's needed though yeah i mean you you said it you well you almost said uh the the quote that i would say that almost kind of puts this in in the best way and it's a, a quote from i can't remember if it's blade or blade 2 where he says some people are always trying to ice skate uphill yeah um john let's move on um i'm gonna keep with you if that's okay and we'll move on to your next story um obviously we have the uh the nhl officially um has restarted well it officially launched uh, the first games the first games of the uh, nhl took place last week um in um the czech republic in prague um obviously nashville is part of that um global series um last weekend and officially the first games were played in, in czech republic um however this week um we see a this week as of i think actually last night tuesday um the 11th was the official drop of the puck for the first games of the season um and we we, we obviously um the, the season has literally only started matches have only played last night the first games have been played across the league um but uh you have a story coming out of nashville already yep prior to um, the start of the season Prior to the start season, so um, every every team, every organisation makes um, sort of updates and changes through the off season. 
Uh, and I make no apologies for the fact that I've brought this news story of uh, the upgrades to the Bridgestone Arena um, because that's the home of the Nashville Predators. Uh, I'll be totally honest, the only reason this caught my eye was the food. Um, so they held a, a press event uh, and brought in uh, people to try all the stuff that they're going to put in the, the concessions throughout the arena. My favourite part, though, reading it was how many different concessions there are and the fact that they all serve different stuff. So within Bridgestone Arena, you can get things like a massive um, taco plate. You can get chicken wings at a different place. You can get a salad bowl at another place. Like It's insane. The, the volume of stuff. Some of the... There were some brisket sliders that looked insane. Like... And they actually talk about the Bridgestone Arena chef team were spending the summer going through all this and updating all of this. It's incredible when you think that at the SSE, as much as I love the SSE, there's only so long you can stand in a queue for a barely cooked chicken burger. <laughs> or overcooked chicken burgers, like maybe. It's, it's either charred to a crisp or it's still clucking. Like, that's your options. And, and don't, um, dare, don't dare ask them to take the cheese off because they're like, sorry, we don't do plain. What? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, that's not the only changes that they're making at Bridgestone, though. Um, obviously, um, this is now... Uh, these arenas have major safety concerns. There's a lot of people there um, and there's a history of um, some unfortunate things taking place here. So safety is always a, a primary concern. So at the Bridgestone Arena, um, at their two major entrances, they have brought in 14 brand new state-of-the-art Evolve metal detectors. Uh, my favourite part of all this is that, um, if you remember when we went to Vegas, when we went through, we basically had to empty our pockets into what looked like an airport scanner. Then we had to walk through separately, collect our, all of our stuff on the other side, and then we were in the arena. In Nashville, that's going to be different. If you are entering without a backpack or any sort of bag, you'll be able to go through one of these new Evolve detectors and just walk straight through with everything in your pockets. Uh, now, I assume that these are being monitored, that if there's something, someone will, will flag you and take you to one side. But you'll be able to get... Now, the way that they put it is, um, fans entering the venue without bags will no longer have to take items out of their pockets and will be able to get from the front door to their seat in a matter of seconds. That is a brilliant step forward because one of the biggest complaints I had about trying to get into the games in Vegas was how long it took to get through the doors. Um, by the time you'd waited in the queue outside to get in the doors to then getting through, I honestly think that took us about 20 minutes. Mm. Uh, it was not a short process to get through. Uh, the same is true whenever I was in Montreal. Now it's a much, much older building. Um so they're still using some old school turnstiles, but you're still going through that security. You're still going through all that rigmarole that if you're running a little bit late to the game, you could potentially miss face off because that security stuff takes that long. Um, so that's a, a massive step forward. Uh, and the other thing that they've done is I think I remember seeing these in Vegas. So this isn't a, a brand new thing to the league, but they've brought in um, these selfie photo kiosk pods um, so these massive screens that you can select the players that you want to have in a selfie with you and they'll, they yep. walk in and you get a selfie. Or I think the booth actually takes the photo for you and then you can either text or email the photo to yourself. Correct. Now, my experience of them is is it's pretty cool. Like You get to see you got a photo with a player. You didn't really. But hopefully it's better than the system they've got at the Hockey Hall of Fame because I did... Um, a couple of the experiences there which uh, like the goalie experience and the uh, shooter experience and it's supposed to video you and send you the video afterwards none of it worked <laughs> so I, I did of it course. all I've got a like couple of photos that Catherine I've got yep yeah, I've got a couple of photos that Catherine took and that's it and I'm raging I, because the goalie one I was really good I got 8 out of 10 saves see skill skill right there exactly. yeah i this the self that selfie idea that selfie kiosk i remember as you mentioned i did see it when we were in in vegas um there's quite a large queue for it and i think um even the technology at that point whenever we were there uh, that's what now about three four years ago maybe was it your we last we were there was it 2019 I think, three. Was it? Three, three years, years. four it must be four years sorry it must be four 
Um, so, I mean, whenever we were there, the technology, even at that point with that selfie booth or whatever it was, it looked pretty, it was pretty first class at that point in terms of the way they had it set up that whenever you click the button, the screen was almost like not see-through, but they had the player come up behind you. So it looked like it was quite, it looked natural. It it looked very natural. Yeah. They don't, they don't just appear and they're not stationary either. They kind of move around. Yeah. If you select more than one player, they kind of interact together um it is very very cool i think yep. it's almost all entirely ai generated i don't think for instance like they go through their entire roster and go right okay if someone picks you three you all have to do something so that like that's your video with for your photo with the fan it's clearly it's ai generated with their their bodies their images um but it is it's is really cool and when you think this is a family oriented game especially for kids yeah um if they're wanting to get that f- get that photo with a player there's an opportunity for them to to get it maybe not seeing the player in person um but you get that that's a that's a good memory to make that's yeah. a that's a good little mem- piece of memorabilia to take away with you in your email inbox it's a good addition to uh, the night experience anyway um let's see how long it'll take before uh, they bring something in in the elite league <laughs> Just imagine it. Does our does our air hockey table still work? Uh, is it even still around? I I don't know. It's I think up it's on the bridge. On the bridge. I think bridge. it's on the bridge, but I don't know yeah. if it's plugged in. No, don't know. Anyway, um, I have one more story before we we move on from this period. Uh, and as we mentioned, we the uh, the official uh, stop. <laughs> Update from yes. the Coventry Blaze versus the Guildford Flames. We're in the second period, and it's now two nil to the Coventry Blaze. Thank you, uh, as always, John, for the updates there. Thank you very much. It's really appreciated. As I was mentioning, we had uh, the fact that the season has returned in the elite, uh, in the NHL as of last night. For us, actually, hang on. We're, we're, we're trying to pretend this is Thursday. We're still recording on Thursday, and it's not Wednesday. I'm confused. Like, we, 11th, we've, we've already broken the fourth wall on this. Yeah. I don't think it matters at this point. So, um, as of the 11th, um, so if you're listening to this on Friday, three nights ago, um, the 11th of October was the first games of the season. But the weirdest thing came out of it, and it, it was it, it was this morning when I opened um, my... As you do, first thing whenever I, I wake up in the morning is I, I get all my news and my updates from Twitter. So I wake up... As I'm waking up, I open my phone, go to Twitter, see what's been happening in the world of, in America while I've been in bed, especially in the world of sport, especially in um, NHL and ice hockey because it's all played when I'm sleeping. Um, so I was, whenever I opened my Twitter and I was looking just kind of through the, the NHL feed that I have, um, the, the one thing that kept coming out was uh, the word pretty much cringeworthy or uh, embarrassment. And I was like, oh, what is this about? Um, so I want to get your take on it, John. Here uh, I've I included the link that has the cringe tastic clip, as it's mentions in the in the in the thing. Um, just before the puck drop for the New York Rangers Tampa Bay Lightning game, uh, opening night um, game, and it was played on Premier Sport. Um, if anybody did, maybe did watch it, maybe they're watching it back tonight, yesterday, whatever. Um, the referee Chris Rooney was the lead ref for that game, and he launched into almost a bit of an awkward speech that nobody was really expecting for him to come out including the players um as the game was getting started and they were about to drop the puck he launched into uh to our great players and our great fans welcome to opening night of the 2022-2023 nhl season he then went on to complete it by what's better than this good luck to all players and let's have a great season Everybody then was started cringing and being like, uh, did, "Was he was he asked to say anything? Is this something that he was encouraged to do?" Um, but yeah, transparent. It was just like a, um, wh- wh- why did uh, he's like the thing that has came out of it was that he he mentioned himself. He's come out and kind of mentioned himself was well, the NHL haven't been great at publicizing themselves. There was no real kind of fanfare in relation to the fact that like the season was starting. So I thought first game of the season someone may someone from the league should say something to say you know welcome to the league this is the first game but it kind of came across uh, as a bit cringe it was yeah uh, yeah uh, uh, and I've, I've watched it and it's it's one of those awful moments like that you can't look away from but you wish never <laughs> happened like he, he he goes out with the best intentions um, and I love the, the the piece that you put up, by the way. It notes that this isn't the first time this happened. Um, it happened last season as well, um, when the, the league came back for real after COVID. Yes. Um, and opening night, 
um, that referee, Kelly Sutherland, uh, delivered a, a speech, which I think was much more planned by the league. I think that one that one sits better. This does what someone should have told Chris Rooney is that this doesn't have to happen every season. We're we're kind of the back other, to normal. The other thing someone should have probably said to Chris Rooney is, "Mate, you just said welcome to the start of the season. The season started last week. Yeah, he's a week, he's a week late." Um, there's already points on the board, so yeah, it's a bit but awkward. But you know what? It's it's so North American not to accept that something has started if it didn't happen in North America. So do you know what? Outside of um, was it San Jose and Nashville? Outside of those two pockets who played in Prague, um, then yeah, probably as far as the rest of the the league and the countries are concerned. The league hadn't started again. No, you're right. Um, that takes us, I think, to the end of our second period. John, before I click this button, we have no penalty box. We have nothing else that need to be need to be clarified or added on. We we have we have nothing else uh, right now in this period. But right in the Coventry Blaze versus the Guildford Flames, we are still in the second period. It is 3-0 now to the Coventry Blaze. Looks like Coventry Blaze have a, a comfort win, comfortable winning so far anyway. I'm coming in the second. Is that towards the end of the second period? How far are we in? Uh, no idea because the Elite League webpage is absolute <laughs> doggy testicles. Okay, with that, and I'll be, I'll be. Do you know what? I'm even gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go further than that. Remember when I said it was the end of the first period and it was one nil? Yep. Turns out that was nonsense. They just didn't ups- update their website. Um, so it actually looks like um, their now their web page is currently showing that in the first period Coventry scored two goals, um, but right now their scoring sheet shows a goal that was scored by at eight minutes forty seven, and a second goal that was scored at twenty one twenty one. So where's the other goal? It it could be three nil. It could be two nil. You know what? It could be five four for all I know based on the Elite League website. Let's just go to let's just go to the, the let's just go to a more reliable source. Flash scores has it down as three nil, one goal in the first period, two goals in the second period. There you go. Well, there you go. The elite league can't even keep its own game center up to date properly. I mean, this league is just donkey. And with that, let's move on to our period three of hockey. Hey. Welcome to the third period of the Door 14 Hockey Podcast. This is our general Knocky Knocky News. Knocky News is where we talk about anything and everything else in the world of hockey that doesn't fit neatly into period one or period two. Uh, Marty, as the guys so eloquently put it last week through, I think, all three periods, uh, you have done the lion's share of the work uh, for Knocky News um, which is really terrible considering that this is uh, really supposed to be my period. Um, but I, I honestly, I, I just haven't done the work. Uh, but you have. Uh, I'm going to go with you and I'm going to... Let's let's go with the, the weird one first. Let, let's go with the <laughs> this weird sort of comparison site for NHL teams. So I don't... I, genuinely, um, so I, I, I don't know if... Um, I don't know if I'm I'm normal like a normal hockey fan. Let's let's be honest. I, I don't know what a normal hockey fan is, but I'm sure other hockey fans who have teams they support. I'm obviously in my Toronto jersey tonight. I'm a Toronto fan. Um, I obviously have. I'm not saying I've set up like a um an alert to say of any any Leafs news, but obviously one of my feeds that I have set up is a news feed for 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 Leafs. So anytime any news comes up, any stories come up about the Leafs, I kind of just click in, see what's happening, and see what kind of what stories are going on. This one popped up today, and I kind of thought, why is this in the Le- Why is this popped up in the Leafs? Because all I seen was whenever I whenever from the outset, I just seen uh, from a thing called pensionplanpuppets.com dot com, and it was a comparison of height, weight, age for NHL teams in 2022-2023 season. And I was like, why do they think I'm interested in this? I was interested. Um, have you ever wondered, John, how what the largest team or the youngest team or the oldest team in the NHL is? Don't worry any longer. Do you know what? Absolutely, I have. Great, thank you. That's the that's the response I was hoping you were going to come with. This website uh, gives you a great rundown of all of the NHL teams, including their average height for for the for for the forward lines, 
and height for their defensive lines as well as the average weight for the for the four lines and the average weight for the defensive lines it also has the average age as well um across all of the 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 teams uh have you looked at this chart i'm gonna guess you have already because i was gonna ask a couple of questions and i'm sure you've already read them do you know do you know what do you know what the, the if you're on this table I have looked at it, but I am deeply, deeply aggrieved by this table. In what way? Like the, Okay, so cards on the table, I mm-hmm. assume that yep. this entire blog on this weird website is based around uh, fantasy hockey. That, that's all I can imagine it's about. Uh, it's about um, getting that edge. Who's got the youngest team? Who's likely to have the fittest team? Uh, how height and weight and whatever else has anything to do with that, I have absolutely no idea. But to go to all this trouble, and there's lots of graphs, and lots of graphics, and lots of really, really interesting maths that's done throughout all of this. Then they've got a table, which has uh, all these figures and everything on it, which is fantastic. You can't sort on any of it. Nope. I Um, can't sort that table to find out who the youngest is, really simply. Who puts that graphic together? And also... Honestly... As you mentioned, this is my this is my main thing. Is as you mentioned, you think it's for like to kind of give some people a, an edge when it comes to things like um, the fantasy hockey league. It wasn't even for that. I don't even know what the real purpose was for them coming up with this data. Why did someone spend time, money, and effort into doing a, a research piece on? the size and weight and age of teams in the NHL. And it was just the most random thing that came to mind. But for anybody who is interested, the youngest team average in, in the NHL, the average, youngest team on average in the NHL is the Buffalo Sabres with an average age of 23.29 years of age. Um, that children. Is, which is really young. Um, that is closely followed. I think, was there another team that was 23.3? Three something or is it twenty? Yeah, twenty three point four. See, York, this is the, this is the thing. We can't sort it. Your data is completely <laughs> nonsense. Who puts this stuff online? Seriously. Um, New York Rangers are the second youngest with twenty three point four three uh, average age as well. Um, the oldest team in the league currently, and I'm going to guess the reason why is because they have the oldest player in the league, is the Washington Capitals with an average age of thirty point four three years. That's I what think happens that's when just, you employ old man Ovi. That's that's my exact. That was exactly what I thought when I seen that. I was like, ah, that's, Ovechkin's really just like shot that. Wonder, I wonder when up. he gets too old to do the goal. Uh, I was just like, when, oh. when does it just look really janky and like, oh, I'm too old for this? And then I looked at the average weight, um, just out of interest, because in my head I was thinking, you know, who is the heaviest? <laughs> <laughs> is this going to go the way I think it is? Did you? Uh, no, well, I was thinking, you know, is it a certain player? A certain player that maybe moved to a certain team that we know of and we joke around about hot dogs. I was like, Oh my he, god, it is play? that it's not. It's not. I thought it, it was is. No, I thought it was. They're the second heaviest team in terms of the Who's lines. heavier than the Arizona Coyotes? He's not in the Arizona Who's Coyotes heavier? anymore. He moved. He let he he escaped. He ran away from Arizona. When is this data correctly? from? Here's another problem with this data. We don't know when it's from. It's for the it's for the current lineup for this current season of players in each of the teams. Oh, I, so I need a publishing date. I need a so publishing date. He, 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 oh, this he, today, October twelfth. Wow. He officially moved to Vegas, didn't he? Isn't that where he moved to? He moved to Vegas as part of their deal. That's right. Yep. Isn't that right? So they're two hundred and three point four. Um, and yeah, I tell in, you what, he's lifted their average too. This is in, <laughs> this this is in pounds. No, we say. wait. St. Louis Blues. Two seven seven yeah heaviest team um and I think what was the other thing is the other shame was about um the, it's actually the, the the difference between the the weights for defensemen over the, the the average weight for defense over the average weight for um forward lines there's not a massive difference when it comes to the difference in terms of the the weight differences people thought maybe the the defensemen would be slightly heavier and i suppose there is a bit saying that maybe there is but it's not not too too different but um the the heaviest defensive line if you're interested in that um is sitting at 224 pounds on average um which is tampa bay lightning have the heaviest defensemen so there you go. Must be must be some good eating in Tampa. <laughs> must be. That's what I'm thinking. Must be my, like my, pop, favorite, my favorite thing is... My favorite thing is, while we've been talking, I was kind of going through this piece, um, 
and under under a heading, what does this all mean? Um, the the statement is despite the narratives that we make around which team is taller uh, or older or bigger, we have zero evidence that team makeup expressed in this sort of set of measurements means anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> so again, why did someone spend their time with this, with this piece of research? It doesn't it doesn't make sense. But I it, it did it, it did spend I did um it did give me a good like ten fifteen minutes earlier on when um because I I do like I like. I, I'm 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 one of those people who owns a book um on my bookshelves of like you know what are they called graph infographs is that what they're called and it's like all these different for me I and it's my my wife bought me the book for Christmas last year the year before because I love just like random stats put in really nice colorful tables and then this came up and I was like listen, Ooh. <laughs> listen I'm the guy who took a whole pile of screenshots and put them together to give the elite league a hard time about how empty playoffs was in a nice colorful fashion. I love a good graphic like anyone else, but at least mine had more purpose than this. <laughs> yeah, this has no purpose whatsoever. This has no Absolutely purpose. Absolutely none. But we've just spent about 10 minutes talking about it, so well done, pension plan puppets. <laughs> uh, moving on to our last story for this period, John, if that's okay. Um, and it's yeah, go for, for it. It's another story for me. Um, and I put this in because... You know, if I was, if I had found hockey um, as a child, I think the one big thing that I would have wanted to do, and I still do as a big child now as an adult, is I want to drive as Zamboni like any other person in this world. I think any hockey fan out there, one of the biggest wishes for most hockey fans is they want to have an opportunity to drive as Zamboni. Um, if I was a kid, and I couldn't drive a Zamboni. I suppose the next thing I would want, or the best, the next best thing I would want, would be a Zamboni type toy, similar to what you would imagine any toddler or young child would get in terms of like a a tricycle or like one of those like what are they called? A Moby? Are they called Smoby or Moby bike car things? Is that what they're called? You know those yellow and red cars? You know those really famous ones. Do you know what I had one? And we're already talking about getting one for Ayla, even though she can't even roll over well, yet. But, well, but um, yeah. Here, hold it, hold that thought. Instead of buying her one of those, John. Instead of buying her one of those, how about buying her a Zamboni for a child, a kid Zamboni? So the NHL have partnered up with uh, a, a cool cars company, uh, which has a toy range, uh, a range of toy cars, um, and they have made a replica uh, Zamboni that includes a horn, a Bluetooth speaker, and more. So. I think you should think in, you should look into a, a drivable ride on Zamboni toy rather than one of those red and yellow cars. That was my thought when I seen this. I was like, oh, John should go on those. No, forget about those yellow and red cars. This is what he needs for 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 Isla. Obviously, that means we're forcing that Isla has to like hockey. She she probably will, hopefully. Um, but I thought I would bring this up. The the story itself, when the NHL put this story up and the story went up um, earlier this week, um, they had actually talked about Carter Stamkos, um, who is actually the one who's featured in the photographs, um, who is the model for um, the Zamboni. And there's a little cute little video of um, of him on the, the toy Zamboni on the ice beside the its, its, its large-scale uh, replica. Um, beside do, him. You, do you know why he has uh, been chosen as the the sort of model poster boy for this because during the the all-star press game press weekend or get uh, the, the the press conference as part of the all-star game um in the media room he made a big deal about he was two and he made a big deal about requesting over and over again that he wanted to drive or see the samboni yep. um he would not stop uh the entire time i'm not entirely sure that um steven stamkos his dad was able to answer a single question at the the media drive because carter was consistently asking to be taken to the zamboni to go on a ride on it so um it is absolutely perfect that uh, the nhl uh, and the bolts have made it that carter i hope got the first one uh, as well my other favorite thing from this story reveals a function that i didn't even know a zamboni had what's that did you know that a zamboni has a horn yes of course it does we've heard ours for what to, to tell people to get out of the way i don't know when have you actually heard the horn on a zamboni i've heard our zamboni horn i have i've, I've heard it at least once or twice 
I have. Nonsense. Pretty Nobody's sure heard a Zamboni horn. <laughs> the toy itself, which you just mentioned, it is a ride-on toy. Um, if you can imagine, in the UK, I think the most common ride-on toys are usually the, the replica tractors rather than anything else. Or maybe that's just a Northern Ireland thing. Um, no, no, that's, toy, a, that's a Scotland thing too. It's a Scotland thing too. Uh, this is obviously a, a ride-on ride-on toy um, for kids aged to three to six, um, I think is what the age group is what they're looking for. Um, it does have working headlights, a USB port, SD card ports bluetooth speaker for uh, obviously for music or your own tunes a storage compartment for storing whatever you want in this case for kids probably half eaten crackers uh, and the thing most wanted was obviously a replication of the horn from a real zamboni so there you go um that's that's nonsense that's, put that on your zambonis list. don't have horns this this is another website that's lying to us absolutely um, no, lying to us I, there is like no the... such thing as a zamboni horn i challenge any zamboni driver out there to prove me wrong and put a video of them using the zamboni horn the other thing i, w- I will mention before we move on from this story which i think was the funniest bit uh, which i'm sure at some point john you're going to get to this stage in your your parent life uh the other big thing for parents to know it comes with a rechargeable battery and not one of those weird giant square removal batteries they have to remove from the toilet be charger um but it's going to be simple to charge and can be stuck straight into an outlet but also the battery can be removed if the noise is too much. <laughs> <laughs> e, there we go. Um, okay, John, I don't think we have anything else, do we? No, I don't think there is anything else for uh, the third period of Noki News. However, mm-hmm. it's now the end of the second period uh, uh, I get with the Coventry Blaze and Guildford Flames and... If the Elite League website is to be believed, it's still 3-0. So we still have a period to go and guaranteed we are going to wrap up this podcast before we get to the end. So no one, <laughs> if you're listening here for your updates, uh, yeah, good luck. We are going to be wrapping up our podcast because that takes us to the end of our podcast. Uh, we don't actually have anything for our overtime segment this week um, at all. There's nothing there. Mainly because I don't think, because we, we, we're recording this ahead of schedule for, for, for reasons, um, we didn't actually put anything out on social media to ask for, for the questions. So we apologize for anybody yep. who was wanting to send anything in, Mark. And let's, um, let's make a, let's make a, let's make a, an actual point of something that we said because we were, uh, we were all together at different times at different games. Uh, unfortunately, the four of us uh, were never able to get together at one of the games. But um, Dave was missing at the CHL game and Aaron was unfortunately missing at the Guildford game. Uh, but we were chatting after one of the games about uh, the fact that we have one uh, consistent contributor uh, to the overtime segment. And that's Mark. Uh, Mark, you've already had uh, a question completely answered uh, at the start of this podcast. Uh, but a point was made that, uh, and I know that Marty, you you've tried to to get him onto the podcast. If you're not willing to come onto the podcast, Mark, and well, we get it, some some people don't like uh, putting themselves out there. That's totally fine. Instead of typing your your message to us, send us a voice note, and you'll get instant reaction. You'll get that sort of reaction that comes from just hearing your voice on the podcast. We also may make a segment and maybe a jingle as part of that segment. We were thinking yep. about and it, look, you know. Anyone else, it? anyone else out there, this is not just for Mark. If if you want to ask us a question, if you want to even just give us feedback, if you just want to hear your voice on a podcast, then why not send us a, a voice note through um, one of our social medias? Do it. You never know. You might end up on the podcast. And that's a nice segue into our social media. We are on all the social media channels, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Well, TikTok for whatever reason uh, at door 14 hockey we've got one TikTok we've got one TikTok it's got no likes <laughs> Uh, at door 14 hockey uh, check out all of our episode previous episodes as well as this episode content from our previous episodes uh, at our website door 14 hockey.com um, as as we've asked before and as I as I thanked everyone the last episode at our last podcast we are about to hit a a, a number a quite happy number um it's going to take us over one of our, our most listened to years which we're very excited about so we want to thank everyone again for that um if you have any if you want to leave us any comments if you want to leave us a review uh like on your podcast provider of choice we'd be really appreciative of that um so please do that um um apart from that i don't think i have anything else john no nope, okay uh, other than to say it's still the second intermission between coventry and guilford and I'm really sad, people, but we're not going to be able to bring you the end of the game. 
And with that, we will close off for this week's podcast. I'm your host, Marty. I'm John. Have a great week. <laughs>